the mix pad function. So, or actually called pad mix. So I come to here, I'm gonna press shift right here, right? I'm gonna go to here, I'm gonna press this button right here. And now we have the pad mix function. Now I can play the track back. <laughs> Let me zoom in. And that's our track right there. So now what I want to do is sort of explain it. So for example, this first button signifies the level. And so I can get the level of every single track here. Now I can also use my Q-Link. You'll see my Q-Link here is on two, there's three, there's four, and then there's five. Actually back to one. And that's one. You'll notice here, let me get my pointer out here. Okay. You'll see here that this section, the first four in the first row here, on the bottom here, has this orange-like border around it. And so I can use the Q-Link to actually change the length. Let's say back to you, you'll see it better. There you go. Because once the killing gets touched, you'll see it actually covers that side up, which I gotta fix that one day. But that's okay. The third one, here's the fourth one. So there's one, two, three, four. And now I'll hit the killing again. Now it's on my second row. And I hit the killing again. Third, and of course, the last one is the fourth row. So the killing helps us out a lot. Now, also here, you'll notice once I hit a pad here, I can move this like this, or I can hit my data wheel right here, and I can turn my data wheel and move it up and down too as well. Makes it easy for us to get around. And so I can adjust my sound. I can press play start. I'm here. I can solo that track out now. It's solo. I'll bring it down some before it gets in the red. Right? I can adjust my level. I can get rid of the solo. And I'm back where I started from. Stop that. And this is kind of quick. I can also mute to in this situation. I can mute it and play it. But a better way to mute, of course, is to do the mute button here, but we have panning also. So I can go to panning and you can see here in this grid of all the pads, you'll see summer pan left, summer pan right, right? So we have some pannings going on. Let's look at this one here for the drums here, for that bass drum. I could turn it this way or turn it that way. I could go left or right. Right or left here, see? I want it in the center though, which is kind of cool. I got a snare drum. I can tap it, look for a snare drum here. So these act as that. So we see that, this goes on, and that's the one. So I can maybe want to pan that a little bit here. I'm gonna pan it a little bit slightly to the right. Change a little bit if I hear it. And we can pan any instrument, of course. Obviously, if I go to here and use my Q-Link again, I still have the capability of panning anything else also as well. If I pick something to pan, I can pan it here or whatever. It helps us get around with the Q-Link 2 as well for panning. Now, next we have mute. Now here in mute, I can obviously just mute tracks, right? So I can just play some stuff here. Let me go back and get my down and go back and play it back. As you can see, we can actually mute tracks in and out, a chance to make a mix work, right? That is so cool. I like it a lot, and you will too. I guess you, if you tried it before, it's a great thing to do to be able to mute stuff out, get an idea how certain sounds sound together or not together when you're actually trying to mix some tracks up, see what's going on. So now I want to talk about the sends. So right here is a send. I want to send a sound someplace else. And so I want to send it someplace where I have, in this case, I've got a reverb, a non-linear reverb, and I also have a delay, which is set for a note repeat, right? 
uh, and that's the feedback coming back. So let's look at this. So you can see right here that I'm in send, and this is send one. If I tap send again, that's send two. If I tap it again, that's send three, and again, that's send four. Okay, oh, it's four possible sendings. So let's go back to here, and you see, once I press one again, we see here that these three elements are going to that one send. And that's actually a return inside the mix. So here I am in pad mix. Now watch this. I'm going to go to pad mix. I'm going to tap it right here. I want to go to channel mix. Here's channel mix. And channel mix, we have the return. Now channel mix has several different items here. You'll notice here I can go to audio tracks. I can go to the program, which is my current program. I can go to returns. I can go to submixes. And I can also go back to the main output. But in this case, I want to go to the returns. Now, my first return is right here, which was return one or send one. And you'll notice here it's an air right here. It's a nonlinear reverb. And so let's hit the sound. See, which one is it going to be? We got this one. Let me put this down like this. And I'll put it up like this. You can hear a slight reverb to it, right? It's a nonlinear reverb. And of course, this one too. And you hear that more stronger here. Now let's go with this. Down and up. So it's a slight reverb effect. And of course, this is the return. So it's the return of the sound. And it goes to the output, which is 1 and 2, which is our master. And if you go to here and we press return, and we go back over to here, the main out is our master. Okay? And it ends up going there. That's good. So now we can see it's going there. I'll go to here again. And I'm going to go back to pad mix. Here's pad mix. And so, of course, I can adjust the sounds to send them into that send. So, for example, here, this sound here, which is this, I may want to do more of that. So I'm going to turn the data wheel. And you can hear it change. I'm sending more and more of that sound. So the send return can stay where it's at. I'm just sending more sound into the return. It's kind of cool. And now the next sound I have here, we're here in send number two. And so we want to see what's in there. We'll go back to here. I'm going to go back to channel mixer. And then two, this is main. I don't want to go there. I want to go to return. And it returns right here. So now that I'm in return, I want to see this one right here. And we can see right here, this is an Air Delay Pro. So what goes there? Let's go back to our return. We want to go back to here, to our pad mixer. And in two, we see we have this sound. That's our delay. OK, let's go to the delay. Back to here. Let's go to that delay right here, and we're in two, and this is delay is two, and of course, let me turn it way up. Let's get really funky with it. And you see the delay happen right here? That delay is happening constantly going up and down right there. I can pull this back down here where I wanted that. That's not bad. Once I get there, I'm good. I can just press play start. <laughs> And you can barely hear it, right? But when I stop, you hear it dying slowly. It's in the background. Let's leave the return. We're going to go back here to Pad Mixer, and that's how that works. Oops, let's go to Pad Mixer. I'll just press this here. There we are right there in Pad Mixer. And now I can see what's going on with that send. I can also add another one here. I can do something for three or four if I needed it. But I just wanted to show you those two to give you an idea of the possibilities. The next thing I want to explain here is the inserts. Okay, there are four inserts for every single pad. So each pad can have an insert. I can add an effect there, two, three, or four effects, right? And so let's press insert right here, and we see insert. We'll see that we have one effect here, one here, one. There are two here. There's one here, one here, one. There's two here, and there's two here. So there are effects added in here to help the sound. 
A lot of times we'll add an EQ to make sure we can EQ the frequency of the sound the way it should sound, like maybe a hi-hat or a flute or whatever. You want to make sure it has a certain area within the EQ. A good EQ chart will help you with that totally. So here, I got a bass drum, right? A clap and a bass drum. And so let's say, for example, I wanted to add something. I'd come to here, and I can see this is my EQ. I go to right. The EQ is right there. I can adjust my EQ, right? I go back to here, and I want to add something. I come to effects here. I'll double click here. I'll double tap that. I want to add a compressor. I'll go to here. I'm also going to get a compressor. I'm going to get a simple bus compressor, really, right here. This bus, I'm going to select that. I'll select that. It's there now. I'll come to here, and I'll press this, and I'll play the track back, actually. You'll notice here there's a red border around this where it says init. So I'm going to just turn this knob and get a different sound. So I know it sounds almost the same, and we'll hear it back. I like a little more attack. That's good. I'll come back to here. I want to get out of it. I'll press close this out. And now you see we have two. But see, like we have with the send, we can see there are four dots here. That's insert one, which is the EQ. I'll select insert again. Insert two is our bus compressor. I'll hit it again. We're empty. No one has an insert here at three, and there's none at insert four. But there is at insert one. And so I insert these parts, or these plugins actually, into certain pads. And I want to change or attenuate it somewhat, make it sound different, or make it have that style I want it to have. Now next, I want to talk about routing signals within the mixing console or within the MPC. What is MPC 1, MPC 1 Plus, MPC Live, Live 2, X or XSE. So let's go to here and go back to routing right now. And so I want to route certain singles certain places. Now in this case, you will see once I hit routing, you'll see here that 1 and 2 are going to submix 1. And everything else is going to the program. Meanwhile... 13 and 15 are going to submix 2. So I can play this back still. And so this is still happening, but look, look what's going on here. I'm going to go to here, I'm going to press this, I'm going to go to channel mixer. And here I want to, I'm in submixes, right? And so. I hit that kick drum there here in this mix. And what's affecting it here is this setup here, which is the compressor, vintage compressor right there. See that's happening right there. And for submix two, which is right here, I have. I'll tap right here, you'll see this is a auto pan sync. Let's go to here. I couldn't even see it for a second there. And we'll tap into here. This is an auto pan sync device here, right? So I can go to here and I can change the syncing of these devices. I go to here. I'm going to hit a full pan. I can go a light pan. I can go a slow pan and a fast pan. Let's try a fast pan first. So I like that fast. I press the button in. You can see the selection also of the presets that are available for that particular plugin. And so I like that. I'll push the button in one time. And I like that. I go back to here. And I want to close this out. And I want to hear that back. Okay, let's go back again into this auto pan. We'll go back to this edit right here. And I want to change it now to let's try something that's going to be full panning. Let's try this. As you can see here, we have the wet and the dry. Let's go back to here. Let's close it out. Let's hit it. That sounds awesome. It's going back and forth in the panning. So it's panning back and forth in sync 
to the actual BPM, which I believe is 142. So let's play that back. And that sounds really cool right here. Love the way that sounds. But so I'm using certain effects in certain ways to bring out certain elements within this song structure or this project structure. And I'm using the submix, the mixer, and of course, right back here, the pad mix. Which you could automate this mix, kind of like. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna mute right now, right? I wanna start out with something that's just plain, simple. I mute a bunch of stuff out here and sort of get a few things going in here just to have some fun. Now I did that, I muted some parts out and I wanna to go to right here at the top on the right hand side, this thing right here. See that right there? I wanna to go to there, I'm gonna press that. Oh yeah, now it turned red. Now red means I'm writing. If I go back to here, I'm green, it's just gonna read. So let me go to here, I'm gonna press right. Good. And now I'm going to press it from the top and start writing. I press stop. So now I want to listen back and see what I did. I'm going to press back here at the very top. Oops, the cueing got there. And now it's back to green. Now I'll play it from the top again. And so that's the mix. If I don't like that mix, I just press undo. So it's always good to understand how to use your pad mixer and how it works. It's kind of fun. Any questions, hit me up. Of course, we do lessons. I can teach you one on one. You know how we do. And please show some love and support for us. We'd love to have you subscribe. It'll help us grow the site. The more people subscribe, the more videos I can freaking do. I can do them all day. I know all the software, as you know, and you can always download a copy of any video in our store at samplekings.com. Peace.